do we need to keep the idea at least of uh, a theory of everything alive in order to keep faith in this idea of scientific progress? And before anyone shouts at me about scientific progress, I'm just the messenger. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let them take the blame. What do you think? Well, I mean, a lot of motivation of why I've been running this blog and wrote, the, wrote this book like that is exactly, I think, you know, what, what happened in theoretical physics starting around after Hawking, starting after 1980, was, was something actually quite dangerous because, uh, you know, my analysis of, of the problems that we're hitting is, are, is, is different. But I think the problem that I see happening is that we see kind of a, Kind of a pathology of the scientific of the scientific method. So the the modern science has this whole kind of um, apparatus of of how you get jobs, how you get grants, how you do all this, and and it, it really the the apparatus for how we um, provide incentives for people about what to think about and what to work on is really complete, turns out to be completely wrong. I think for the kinds of problems the field is facing. In the in the past, we used to have. You know, somebody would turn on a new accelerator. They would produce all these unexpected new particles. The theorists would then immediately everybody would would compete to figure out what these new particles were and write ten papers in a few months. And so every the, the field was really driven by this um, new experimental information, and it was very very faddish. But it, it made prog progress. And what's happened is that the experiments have not been telling us anything really unexpected. And so, but there's still this the sociology of how you do science, which is demands that you, you, you continually have this novelty, you continually have a new paper, you continually do, do all this. And it, it ended up producing, you know, a lot of what's happened with supersymmetry and grand unified theories and su super string theory is they were kind of generated by the, the necessity of the way the scientific research is organized. And, and they, they really simply were ideas that, don't, that didn't, didn't work. And instead of, but but people, you know, once people have written a hundred papers about something, they're not going to admit that this doesn't work. And you, you know, and 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 this is actually potentially quite damaging, I think, to the extent that people look and see these TV programs or whatever about the glories of string theory, and then later find out, oh wait a minute, this was all kind of nonsense. This is actually really, you know, has, has real dangers for for the way people, um, you know, <laughs> respect or think about science. Can I come to you, Becky? Because I think I, I can't remember which of the, 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 the creators of quantum mechanics said the, the short version is science progresses funeral by funeral. Is <laughs> was was that Pauling or? Uh, Pl Max Planck. Max Planck, thank you. Um, so, do your students need to believe in a, a fear of everything f to have? an idea that they can make progress or the opposite? What, what, I would say the opposite and right. I would say the opposite because you want them to have some chance to contribute. You know, students can do amazing things. My kids put a payload up in space and fed data to CERN and NASA. They use CERN technology and did amazing things. And you want them to feel that they can do that. And you also teach a lot in science that most of science is being wrong, actually, that you're not always getting the answer. And, you know, you do experiments and perhaps they don't work. And that's all scientific uh, experience. And that's one of the strengths of science, that it could admit, say, supersymmetry, that it's wrong. One of my colleagues spent his whole PhD doing a, um, on supersymmetry at CERN. And of course, nobody seems to have got any evidence for it yet. So I would say <laughs> that actually, you know, perhaps... Perhaps the focus is wrong. I was reading um, about a talk Martin Rees did to the RSA just recently. And, you know, perhaps it, we should more focus about how science should have a vision for improving the planet, saving the planet, sorting out, you know, what's going on in the world rather than this sort of rather, to me now, it seems a bit, you know, who, who decided that? Surely we've got different priorities here. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'd like to say it's not just physics. Um, Richard Horton, the editor of The Lancet, I think it was in 2014, wrote a paper saying 50% of biomedical science is wrong. And he was the editor of The Lancet. So it's not just physics. How do we get out of that? I mean, what do we do? What do we say to students to, 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 to get them to understand that they can somehow step outside, but they're, still, they're not going to suddenly see the universe the way it is? Because on one hand, you're saying step outside the paradigm, but you're not saying, and then you'll see the world clearly. So how do you put yeah. it to them? 
Well, I, I agree. It, 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 it's a bit tricky. I mean, my, mm. my suggestion was that we think of the world as open. We stop thinking it as a thing that we might have an answer to. Not a thing. We okay. somehow think of it as being, you know, what's the answer to the universe? You know, like seven and a half here. It, it, it's, it, it's that it's already divided. That there's, it's out there. We're cracking a crossword puzzle. There's, the problem of human knowledge is, is to crack the crossword puzzle. Well, you know before you start that we're not going to crack it, are we? I mean, it's not that, you know, we've just had 10,000 years of, uh, of human civilizations that's, that's got closer, and we're, just in a little bit, we're going to crack it. I mean, you know we're not going to do that. Um, uh, uh, oh, so so, 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 so if, if we did, we'd close down our universities, we'd pack up, we'd all go home, we'd think, oh, it's all over now, there's nothing more to do. Well, that's what they said, didn't they? Yeah, um, yeah. and, it's, and, and it's, 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 obvious, it's obviously a fantasy. Uh, it, that's, that's not our relationship to knowledge, uh, or to relation, uh, the relationship of knowledge to the world. It enables us to do things. We can do all sorts of things we couldn't do before, and we need to continue to try and do that. But just to to the previous conversation we were having about the theory of everything, I am in favor, as I mentioned at the beginning, I am in favor of pursuing the attempt to provide an overall theory. So in one sense, I like the idea of, yes, we need to try and provide an overall theory, and why do I think that? I think that it's because it's only by trying to make your overall model that you realize the bits that don't work. It's only by having your overall cosmological theory that starts to think, actually, this inflation, cosmic inflation stuff doesn't really make sense. We've got a problem about, you know, where's the edge of the uh, universe? We've got a problem about, you know, the, the mathematics of the... All of, those, all of those bits are part of the overall picture. And you need that overall picture to identify what doesn't work. But that doesn't mean to say there's a right one around the corner. It just means that any model that you perceive, proceed with will always generate those problems. But we're just trying to make our models better and be able to do things we can't do at the moment. And the exciting bit about all of this, now, you know, I do think there is an exciting because most people feel this, oh, the loss of reality is, is, gonna, is a real problem. I, don't, I think it's exciting because it's the idea that we can catch sight of other ways of holding the world which will enable us to do things that we can't do at the moment. So you're, and you're, that's a fantastic idea. You're less in favour of better answers and better mistakes is what you want. <laughs> I think we certainly, we certainly want to find <laughs> new mistakes yes. from our new, new models. Yeah. But I don't think you disagree with that. I mean, no, 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 presumably no, no. you'd love to make a new mistake rather than just repeat oh, an old yeah, one. Oh, yeah, 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 if, if yeah. That's kind of our problem is that we, don't, we haven't in, you know, admitted up to our current mistakes. We're not making any new ones. This is exactly our problem right now. Yes, because, I mean, for a while there, it looked like you were being edged into the defender of the, the, the theory of everything. But then I'm thinking, yes, but you're the man who has bashed away at, at string theory when it had pretensions of being the answer to everything more than anybody else. Yeah, 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 but, but, but very specific, but specifically, because it, it was, I mean, there are things that I and many people could see. You know, there, there's a TV program saying, oh, this is a huge success, and this is wonderful, and this is doing all this great stuff. And I and many other people looked at it and said, well, well, no, it actually doesn't, this doesn't work, and that doesn't work, that doesn't work. And, and you know, that, so that relationship between the kind of public reality and what, I was seeing what was actually going on was, was what <laughs> drove me to the, these various extreme efforts of this blog and the, <laughs> and, and the book. But, uh, yes. but it, it, yeah, it's a separate issue of, you know, is there, I'm in some sense in agreement with the string theorists. I actually had, had lunch with the string theorist in Oxford la last week and we found Don't that we, 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 we tell anyone. <laughs> it's, it's fine. He, he wouldn't mind Joe Conlon. And, but he, uh, you know, and I, I found that we ended up agreeing on on almost everything. You know, except very specifically prospects for certain kinds of ideas that you know that I would claim there's a good argument that this can go nowhere, and he's devoting his life to trying to do it. Um, and I think we ended up. That's not what we really discussed because that, that would not be a very fruitful discussion, I think. But um, other than that, I, you know, I, I'm not. Uh, in terms of goals, I'm, I, I'm unfortunately kind of in agreement with, with the, the string theorists. It's a, but trying to understand that there, is a, that there is a fundamental difference, I think, between the two of you in the sense that, if I've understood right, you think there is an, an objective reality out there. Maybe that only God knows what it is, but it's there. And I think you're saying there may be something out there, but God's never going to tell us. And our relationship with it is always relational. It's always it and us. 
Uh, I think I'm not going to be tempted to say what is out there, because no. any description I give is going to be perspectival. Right. It's going yeah. to be another model. So, but, uh, and in that sense, I go along with uh, Hawking's uh, position. He called it model theoretic realism. I'm not quite sure why he used the word realism. It seems to me that that makes out that it's rather something rather than different from what he, I, I, he seems to be arguing to me, which is that we just have to realize that we operate within frameworks, and they are our reality. You know, we can't break through that reality to, to find the ultimate stuff. But there's lots of constraint on our models. We can't, we, we see the effect of all of the stuff out there in terms of how we understand it. And we understand it through a model. So it's not like we're just lost in this network of um, an idealist world of making up anything you want. You've got loads of constraint, but it's just you can't work out what, what it is that's constraining you because you're stuck in your model. You, you can't get through. You know, I, I thought the quote I had of Hawking is just right. You know, the, there's no, there's no um, model independent test of, of, of a theory. Yeah. Uh, how are you going to do this? <laughs> You've got to have a theory to look to see what's happened. Where does mathematics come into this? Because I, I have a feeling that that's at least part of your hesitation to agree with Hillary. Because I, I can see you nodding at some things you said, but something's yeah. holding you back. Yeah, because I mean, it was a bit, again, it, it, we talked a lot about this in other discussion. The question is, you know, my position, and I, I've been partly in physics departments, partly in math departments, I've been thinking about this relationship of mathematics and physics most, most of my life and, and, and just continually seeing as I learn more about the subject, these deeper and deeper um, relationships between, between the two subjects. So this is part of you know, my resistance that, yeah, well, this is just a model because, I mean, I, I, on the, uh, the mathematician in me is actually looking at um, seeing all sorts of very, very different areas of mathematics, which is a kind of a completely different story than and how we interact with the world, and seeing that at a deep level, these structures are, are coming together between our our model of reality and kind of deep mathematical structures. And so maybe I've I think Lee Smolin accuses me of being a mathematical mystic, and you know, I, yeah. so I, I so I, I can't. Anyway, I, I become more and more the feeling that that there is, there is this kind of deep thing going on there, which is only we only very partially understand, and 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 this you know. Maybe you, know, you can maybe you can say that you know thinking that this exists and is, is some just good to do because it's going to encourage me maybe in, in positive directions or maybe it really does exist. But whatever it is, this is a motivation. Becky, I wanted to come to you because th there's a sort of a dark side to the the idea that there's an objective reality and our models are getting closer to it because you can end up saying, look, I'm objectively right, and you are just objectively wrong. And especially if I've got a PhD from somewhere and you haven't. And there is that sort of authoritarian side to it, isn't it? We I mean, don't want to overplay it, but it's, it is there. Well, you know? yeah, I would agree. And I would agree that how are we ever going to get out into new models unless we have a different education or possibilities of acceptable science within the whole education system? Because that's what you do. And what, you know, we're talking about bigger and bigger accelerators. And that's one particular sort of obsession to get higher and higher and higher energies. And actually, Perhaps that's not the way to go, but that seems to be the orthodox thing now. And you sort of think about, you know, uh, the whole idea of an objective reality. When I was in Chicago, I worked with Bob Garosh, and I swear that he lived in multiple universes. He was like <laughs> one of those parallel universes people. And you sort of think we've lost some of that sort of uh, one, that sort of, Wow, you know, because if you're just stuck in your set model, you know, actually, if you think about implications of quantum mechanics, it's phenomenal. And that could spark different models and different ways that we perhaps could think of students and us interacting with the world in a way which might encourage sort of innovation and new ideas, new approaches. Hmm. Well, it sort of brings us to the, the, the third theme, but it's... To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.